villagers. Whether you want them for an iron farm, or a trading hall, or just a really weird background noise. Villagers are a really important mob in the Minecraft game. I'm going to show you how to make an infinite villager breeder really simply that works in Minecraft Update Aquatic. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Depending on what time you're watching this next episode, from me, Avamance, in my farm tutorial series. And behind me, you can see the iron farm that I did a little while ago. And people have said to me, Avo, Avo, I need to get villagers for my iron farm. The iron farm works really, really well. And it does, by the way, it works really, really well. But I need villagers in 1.13. I need villagers in Minecraft Update Aquatic. But I want to do it in a really simple way. I just want to build it on the ground. I don't want to have to tower up seven high and do stuff with funny doors in the air and all that kind of stuff. I just want to do it on the ground, dead easy. Can you do it? And my answer to you, dear viewer, is yes. Yes, you can. I'm going to show you probably the simplest farm I know for villager breeding that will give you as many villagers as you want. Don't you go anywhere, because we're going to do it now. For the breeding section of this, you're going to need 11 torches, 60 wooden fences, any wood you like, 31 wooden trap doors, also any wood you like, six doors, also any wood you like, two buckets of water, one hoe, one spade, eight or more stacks of carrots, and at least three villagers. For the optional transportation system, you are gonna need two powered rails, two normal rails, one detector rail, one redstone dust, one dispenser, and it must be a dispenser and not a dropper, one hopper, two chests, two levers, and as many mine carts as you think you are gonna need villagers. So if you need about 20 villagers, you're gonna need about 20 mine carts. To make this, you don't need a lot of space. You just need a rectangle that is 10 blocks by nine blocks. I've got it there in orange, 10 blocks by nine blocks. That's the outside of your farm area. Now, outside of that, you're gonna have the transport area where you take your villagers away if you need them, but that is the only space you need for the farm area. It is really small. The first thing I want you to do is lay out the fences. So we're gonna go 10 in one direction and nine in the other. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then nine this way. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then just square that off. There you go, that is the outer edge of your farm. Then what I want you to do actually is take out a row of blocks just one deep at the moment on the inside edge of this farm so you're going to need yourself a spade here that's perfect and then along the nine edge so this is this slightly shorter edge i want you to come in one and where we've got these three blocks in front of you i want you to dig those three blocks out so one two three and go down five this being one already, two, three, four, and five. And then in the direction of your farm, I want you to go in one, two, and then a single row like that. So we've got a three by three square here, and then a ledge that is three along. Then get yourself a torch, just one torch is all you need and shove that torch on that back wall. Get yourself some doors, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That is all the doors you need for this particular section. Get yourself another torch, shove it there, and then from one block up from the bottom there, stick yourself a ladder and another one, and another one, and another one, and then get yourself out. Then what you can do is you can get rid of that ladder because you don't really need it and replace these three with a closed trap door like that. They can open if you need to, but we can leave them closed for now. Now, the reason we can use a trap door is because it is light transparent. And what that means is we've got light going all the way from the very sky up there all the way down 
to the edge of these doors. The doors can effectively see that light. So if you close it up, they can still see the light. If you put glass there, they could also see the light. If you put slabs there, they cannot see the light. It's really weird. So even though it's a transparent slab, it won't work. So you've got to have trap doors or glass if you wish, but I prefer trap doors. And then I'm going to mark out this bit of soil here and get rid of the middle. In the middle, I'm gonna put a bucket of water and that gives me a nice little farming area. I'm gonna fill that up with some carrots and that is stage one of this farm. Stage two is remembering you're gonna be in survival. So you wanna put some light into the farm. So we're just gonna put a torch on each corner because the last thing we want is for zombies to be spawning inside the farm. That just won't do at all. Come to the middle, put a torch on either side, come to the middle here, a torch there and right in the middle here you can see there is one middle post put one there and put one there so that is fairly well lit you've got any point in this now if I pull my f3 screen up you can see that the uh, block uh, value is 10 all the way around here it goes down 9 10 9 10 11 and 8 in the middle which is the furthest point away from any light. So there is nothing on here that is seven or less. So you're not gonna get anything spawn inside this farm area. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into this ditch and we're gonna choose a corner. It doesn't matter which corner you choose, but choose the corner that you think is gonna be opposite the corner that you're gonna have kind of your exit strategy, the ones that you're gonna remove the villagers from. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna remove the villagers from this corner here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across to this corner and I'm gonna shove in, actually before I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna dig out one more trench. Almost forgot, almost only went one deep. That weren't done at all. We've gotta to go two deep. So let's get this one more deep like that. And then in this corner, I'm going to shove a bucket of water. Now I can watch where that water goes all the way around. And in the last block that's got water on it, so it's like all the way down, and that's the last block, dig that out and then dig out a trench all the way to that corner. Whoops, to that corner. Let's just put that back there. There we go. And same on this side, come around where the last block is, which is there, dig out one more trench so that'll give you a three deep and you can see in that corner it is pushing towards that corner there that is exactly what it is we're trying to achieve so that's great and then get yourself some trap doors and put trap doors all the way around keep them closed for now there we go, so we've got trap doors all the way around, that's perfect, that's exactly what we need. And then get yourself oak fence, shove oak fence on one bit and then come in next to it, just like that. And then remove the first one. And then what I want you to do is I want you to put a row of oak fence above these trap doors all the way around. There. So you've got a complete ring of fencing all the way around, giving a one high space right around this perimeter. And that is the shape of this farm done. We're now going to construct the exit area. So remember where your original was. That's my original block. So we're going to the opposite corner over here. So come to the corner that is opposite that original source block. So the corner that has got the water running to it and dig out one block there and one block there, either side of this fence post. Then dig the fence post underneath, one block there, one block there, one block there. And then another one, one, two, three. So you've got yourself kind of a little L shape with the corner of the L being underneath this fence post. Here, dig out two, here, dig out one, very, very easy, which allows you to go down inside. On this block, shove a lever. On this block, shove a powered rail. Here, shove a normal rail. Here, shove a normal rail. Come up, shove a powered rail, and then come up onto the surface and shove yourself a detector 
rail. That detector rail is really, really important. Turn on that fella there. Very good. There we go. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a dispenser system. So what we're going to put out, let's just get rid of this grass here. We're going to get ourselves a dispenser that's going to be facing this guy here, facing the um, powered rail. So we're going to shove it in there. You can see it's facing into the powered rail. We're then going to take out that. We're going to shove a hopper into the dispenser. So that's shift clicking into the dispenser. And then we're going to put a, I've for some reason got a trap chest. It can be a trap chest if you like, but actually a normal chest is perfectly fine. And we're going to shove a chest on top of that hopper. Then what we can do is we can just fill up at will this hopper with mine carts. However, before we do that, we want to put one mine cart there. What that's going to do, that's going to go up and down and up and down and up and down, just like that. And that way it's not going to be hopping over onto that detector rail. Now, the reason we waited before putting anything else on here, specifically this redstone, is we just wanted to make sure that that wasn't going any further than that. So shove one bit of redstone on there, that's perfect. And we also want to power this block here. So we're just gonna get a lever and that powers that block there. Notice that it still doesn't go further, it's absolutely fine. We can replace that block, we don't need it. And that is the dispenser system. So when we're ready, we can fill up this chest with hoppers and that'll allow us to have plenty, plenty, plenty of minecarts to take away our villagers once we get them breeding. Now this bit is actually really quite important. What I want you to do is I want you to get one rail there and then I want you to dig out one, two. A very deep, i.e. two, trench. Doesn't matter what you do after that, as long as you've got a two trench there. And on that, I want you to put a powered rail, and then a normal rail, a normal rail, normal rail, normal rail, and a rail. And that rail can go off wherever you would like that rail to go off. It really doesn't matter. It can go anywhere you like, and that can go off to your iron farm. It could go off to your um, villager trading hall. It can do whatever you want. It's gonna go off somewhere. So I'm just gonna run some uh, rails off. Remember, if this is going along your overworld, you might wanna protect it, not that. You might wanna protect it from zombies because zombies might get in the way or you might get mobs on it and it just gets in the way. So I'm just gonna run that like that. Let's have a powered rail there. And I'm just gonna power these powered rails very quickly. I can't get in there and that can go there like that. There we go. So we've got a system. Now what that will do is if you find that it hits a sheep or a cow or something irritating over on the line and the minecart bounces back, what it doesn't then do is run back over this detector rail and shoot out another hopper because that would be a disaster. What it does is it hits that, hits that powered rail there and just goes straight back again. And you might find it goes there, it goes back. Don't you look at me, Mr. Creeper. I'm in creative, you can't eat my face. And that goes back over there and back off where it's meant to go. And it's really easy to be able to deliver your villagers in the minecarts that way. Brilliant. So we have got a chest full of minecarts. I did change it for a proper chest because the uh, other chest was potentially gonna set off some redstone. And I didn't want that to happen, being a trap chest. Every time you open it to shove some it in, it's gonna give out a redstone signal. So don't do that. It's just easier to have a normal large chest. Then you wanna come into your farm and you wanna transport your villagers from a local village, whatever it might be. You only need three, although you can have more if you want. And you wanna get them, I don't know, maybe through here, through a gap there, and then once you've gone through it, you can close it back up again. You can go, right, thank you, Mr. Villager, you're inside my farm now, there's one, and then you can shove that, and there's two. So that is blocked off. And then, I want you to come down here, and I want you to get one of your villagers, whether you push them or what you do, I don't care, shove one of your villagers in here, anywhere you like. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter if the doors are open, doesn't matter if the doors are closed, you can just shove your villager in there. It is light enough that they will be happy. It is light enough that there will be no mobs spawning and they will doodle around inside here for as long as you want them to. Then you come up. Look, he's doodling around already. Close up your trap doors and you need two more villagers. One, two. 
and that is it doesn't matter what villagers they are although it obviously does help a little bit if you have a farm i got a little bit lucky there with a the brown coat but if you've not got a brown coat it's not critical it just means that they will farm the farm for you and then you need to feed them some food so all i'm going to do is i'm going to get some food i'm going to literally shove a load of carrots out at them i'm going to maybe put 10 stacks of carrots probably enough there we go so there's a load of carrots in there and what will happen is they will eventually decide when they're less grumpy about being pulled out from their village to go and pick up some of those carrots and once they have i will be back so you can see here now we've got some little love bubbles starting all right this little brown coat fancies the one in the white. I don't know what the boy is. I don't know what the girl is. I don't care. I, it's completely down to an individual's preference. But we have got some proper villager loving going on. And what will happen eventually is we'll get a little villager baby. And that little villager baby will tootle around inside here whilst the doors underneath are going clatter, clatter, clatter. And what I suggest you do is you build this farm up. Look, you've got hearts coming from the other one now as well. You build this farm up until you've maybe got four or possibly six villagers in it it will work with two but four or six villagers you'll find you just get a much faster yield how many villagers do you want if you only want a couple then just use two if you want uh, quite a number then get yourself up to six full-grown villagers in this farm just wait for the baby to pop sometimes they just get a little bit grumpy and other times they'll make a baby straight away but if you've got those hearts you can be sure that they are eventually going to make a baby i love the way they walk towards each other slowly like they're trying to seduce the other one it's hilarious and i don't know if you can see but the brown one has got a little baby between its legs, like it's some kind of villager penguin, and it's giving it some carrots, except it's thrown it too far away. Now that took approximately eight minutes, which is probably about average, but if you see it, I don't know if, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Right, go on. Take those, little man. Can you have them? Oh, right. You, oh, right. So that's a bit greedy. I'm going to try to give your kids some carrots and you're in there trying to get them off him. Right. So there you go. You've got your little villager saying, hello, daddy. I would like some carrots too, please. But he's just been made about eight minutes. As I say, that's about probably about average for two villagers. Now, what I recommend is that you allow that little villager to grow up until you've, as I said, got four or maybe even six villagers in here. It won't matter. You're not going to saturate the village because that f uh, village down below where all the doors are is five blocks down. It will register as a village, but it will think the village is constantly a population of just one. These two villagers are outside of the population zone, but they're inside of the detection zone. So this will keep breeding and breeding and breeding and breeding and breeding until it literally runs out of time. It will just lit fill this place up rock solid. As long as I've got enough food, it will keep on breeding. So I'll be back when we've got six adult villagers. So you can see now we have got six adult villagers and that for me is about right for this villager farm. What you want to come and do now is all of these outside trapdoors, you want to open them. Just walk all the way around the outside, get these trapdoors open. Now the villagers will not be able to get into these because they are taller than the one gap that we've got underneath these fences. However, any babies will be able to fit. You can see they're already getting amorous, they're already having a go. You've got to love them for trying, haven't you? Look, and you can see multiple villagers now have got multiple hearts. So the rate of breeding is going to go up. If you want the rate of breeding to go up even faster, that's fine. Don't open the trap doors yet. Wait so you've got eight or 10 or 12 villagers. Doesn't matter, they will keep on breeding. You can see we've only got six doors underneath here, but they're still chucking out love hearts when there are six villagers on the top. It doesn't matter how many you've got. It's a effectively infinite and what we're waiting for is now another little baby villager to get born so where is this little baby villager we're waiting and there we've got another little baby villager we've got zombies coming to have a go but the zombies can't get to them so it doesn't matter which is brilliant because they're just too far away with those uh, fences to be able to get to them but we've got a little baby villager there 
and this little baby villager could be the first one that falls into the water. You can see it goes into the water, it gets pushed, gets collected by this car in the corner, there he goes, and off he goes around the system and he's going off to wherever it is you want the baby villager to go to. It could be a storage system for waiting for him to grow up. Haha, <laughs> we've also had a little zombie come and have a go at it as well. That just shows that you do really, really need to have um, some kind of protection over that. But So that little baby villager can go off to I don't know, a villager grower to allow him to grow up. It doesn't take that long, about 20 minutes for a villager to turn into an adult villager. Or it could go straight to your breeder. Now look, that, that fella's gone there as well. Over he goes. <laughs> You've definitely, definitely got to protect those because the zombies are going to eat up all of your minecarts. But that is how it works. Very, very simple. And they'll keep breeding forever. Look, there's already another little baby villager in there uh, to go into the next minecart. So that's brilliant. And that is one properly simple villager breeder. All you've got to do is make sure that they've got plenty of carrots. So if you wanted to, you could set up some kind of dispenser on the side that, or dropper that shot out carrots uh, ready for the villagers to pick up. Or you can just make sure you've got a brown coat and it'll just keep farming those carrots for you. You can use corn, you can use potatoes. It's completely up to you. But those villagers will breed and breed and breed. That is it. That is how to stock your villager uh, trading for hall. That is how to stock your iron farm. That is how to stock your really loud room full of villagers that make a lot of noise. However you want, I don't know, whatever you like. I don't know, it's up to you. Whatever floats your boat. So if you've enjoyed that video, please do make sure you slap that like button. It'd be great to know that you're enjoying the farming videos and I will continue to make them perfectly working in 113.1 and I can't imagine why it would break moving forwards. Also, if you've not done it already, hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and my notification squad, so hit the bell too and I'll see you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye!